And I came to High Point and I've never seen so many dogs. And I don't think they had her on record. I mean, the RAs don't care. Um, that, you know, I can't say what happened then. As students at High Point University, a big question we have is why there are so many dogs on this campus. To uncover the truth, we decided to interview two students with ESAs that might know the real story. My name is Mimi Argro. I am a junior here at High Point University. I think I was dealing with a lot of anxiety and depression and I was struggling and I was also lacking motivation and responsibility. So my doctor suggested it and I kind of just went through the process and found my dog and this is kind of how it started. I know it's different depending on schools because I came from Swanee, like I said, and at Swanee they required a letter from your doctor or your physician and then they required just a basic paperwork and so I, it was really hard at Swanee and I went through lots of meetings and then I came to High Point and I haven't even met with them. I guess I, they just transferred my need for an ESA over was really easy here. And at Swanee, no, it, it was a lot harder to obtain and they followed the rules a lot stricter about they need to be in your room, they always need to be on a leash. And my dog has a lot more freedom here because I think so many people have pets, whether they need them or not. I am Olivia Stannis and I'm a senior. I have seasonal depression and bipolar disorder, so um, I, my mood swings are off like often really bad so I decided I was going to get one and it's been really amazing this past winter has been the first winter I haven't really had seasonal depression so it's been really good. I think that if you have the proper paperwork and you have a, reason, a valid reason I don't think it was hard. Um, sometimes I miss the emails though they didn't realize I had an ESA one time but other than that they're pretty good about it. I think everybody has their own reason. Some people when you're in college, you really should think about it if you really need an ESA or not, or just an animal, for example. Some people get them just because they're like, let's get a dog, and then other people really need an ESA and it turns into your world versus you don't and it becomes a chore. I think people that don't really need them treat it like a chore. After talking with Mimi and Olivia, we decided to head over to the Office of Accessibility and Resources to uncover why so many students are getting away with ESAs on campus. Are they really as easy to obtain as they say they are? Are all dogs really registered? How many students have an ESA for the wrong reasons? What really is the fine line with getting an ESA? With these questions in mind, here's what Rebecca Berger had to say. An emotional support animal is an animal that is designated for an individual who um, actually uh, are most often diagnosed with a mood disorder, problems with loneliness or anxiety, and need of the support that an, uh, another living being can give it to provide that emotional support. The ESA must be maintained in their residence hall room um, and uh, must be on a leash in, in any time it leaves that room, and they're not really permitted to congregate in um, common areas. So in the study rooms on the door, in the residence halls, um, uh, you know, outside in front in the green spaces, the, you wouldn't take your emotional support animal out there to play in the grass. You would take it to the dog park or another space. I think sometimes students confuse the loneliness that they feel at college with the actual need to have an emotional support animal. But I do think that just because um, Pets make you feel good and they give you that emotional support and there's that name and they're named emotional support animals that sometimes there's some confusion on just not just students but the general public's misconception of what the role truly of an emotional support animal is. And because we have documentation criteria, we don't have to rely on whether or not we believe a student. So what is the fine line?